Greetings everyone, and uh, welcome back to one of my uh, Tuesday special videos, or is that special Tuesday videos? Well anyway, regardless of how order, what order I put it in, today I thought I would talk about two publishers that did very short runs of comics, but are known mostly for their magazine work. So the reason I'm putting both of them is just because one of them has only two issues and I'll talk to you about that in a bit. But first I wanted to talk about Skywald. So uh, Skywald is much better known for their magazines, uh, comic related magazines. Uh, Nightmare, Psycho, Scream, uh, Hell Rider, which is uh, possibly a, um, a prototype for the Ghost Rider, but that's probably better, stay, you know, talked about in another video somewhere down uh, the pike. But for now, let's talk about Skywall itself. Um, it's actually a venture by uh, Saul Brodsky, which is the sky part, and Israel and Herschel Waldman, which is the walled part. Thus, they took uh, the last parts of both names and made Skywald. <laughs> Um, and like I said, they're mostly known for their magazine, horror magazines. They did have a few other publications, but they only had uh, about one year, if that, of comics. And they only had a few titles, no superhero uh, titles. And uh, and again, it just it it just didn't last long, probably because it was in the early '70s, and the competition between uh, for comics at that point with Charlton. Harvey, Marvel, DC was fierce, and I just think that they, they couldn't get their comics on the newsstands, right, because of the distributors and so forth. So, again, they're not the easiest things to find. It's taken me a couple years to finish the set, and uh, I finished it this past week thanks to my buddy Lawrence King of Comicdom. So I thought, well, why not? Let's do a short video on them. So... As you can see, Skywall Comics, uh, they were all 25 centers and 52 pages. By the way, I, I guess I'm not being totally uh, honest in saying that I have the complete set because I'm not talking about their romance line, which was called Tender Love Stories. I'm just not interested in those, so I'm leaving those out. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, I, 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 I've only seen one of them. And those are just not my thing. Just the same way I left out like Tippy Team from my Tower set. Uh, again, there's just sort of just like another to me. That's sort of another uh, genre that it doesn't really appeal to me. So there are those are there are four issues though of Tender Love Stories. So if you want the complete complete set of Skywalk comics, you need to get those as well. But again, I'm not interested in those. But essentially, they had the only they only had three genres: westerns, uh, jungle, and one kind of horrorish title. And I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to go sort of by alphabetical order. Um, the first one is Blazing Six Guns. Again, the, not again. The, these almost all had. I think, in fact, all of them had one new story and about three or four reprints from the 50s, 40s, etc. Uh, you'll notice that one thing that they all have is this um, lamp, uh, old style lamp post, and a shingle uh, with the uh, issue number, the month, the publisher, and the character that is featured. You'll see that in all these comics. Um, like I guess that these are not easy comics to find because I, I just the people a lot most people don't even know about them, and those that do uh, probably want to snatch them up. So there are just not that many out there. Uh, there were some pretty f good um, frontline creators, though, um, in these in these comics. Uh, these these covers, for example, look to me like Dick Ayers and 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 John Severin worked on them. Uh, the interior, um, the writers were um, like Robert Kaniger, Len Wein, Len Wein uh, artists like um, Sid Shores. Uh, Mike Frederick also had some in here. Uh, so again, there were some top, really good, good top flight creators. Uh, that was called Blazing Six Guns. Those are the first two issues. Then you had this one shot called The Bravados, which starred um, a team of five 
Western um, characters. I'll get to that when I get to the Wild Western Tales. And then you had, again, some of these probably um, public domain uh, Western characters. Butch Cassidy had a three-issue series. Most of the... Most of the Westerns were... were um, had the art done by Sid Shore, if I recall correctly. Um, again, this is kind of a rough number three, but again, you know, I only paid a couple bucks for these, if that. Again, it took me a while. This one is pretty good shape. This is Jungle Adventures starring Zangar. So, I think sort of in the, in the Tarzan mold, he wasn't actually an actor that um, was assaulted and uh, had, you know, had, got, had amnesia. Uh, he was an actor, actually, that worked with animals, so the animals uh, sort of, you know, took care of him, and and uh, he... Uh, I walked into the jungle with them, and he started just uh, acting more like an animal and became very strong, and eventually came back and took revenge on those that assaulted him. So, again, the art is really not good in these Jungle Adventure comics. They're just pretty bad. But they do have, again, those backups, Jojo, Sheena, etc. from the 40s and 50s. So, they are mildly interesting. Uh, certainly uh, not top-shelf comics. There's a nice little date stamp there. And this is the one that most people probably would be interested in, The Heap. This is a character, the, the original Heap was in Hillman comics. This is, this is not that Heap, but it has some similarities. And this is actually a pretty, you know, of all these comics, this is the best uh, written and, um, and drawn. Uh, I believe this was um, Robert Kaniger on the scripts. And Tom Sutton did really nice art in here. Pretty good story. Uh, so if you if you have if you want to get just one Skywall comics, this is the one I would suggest. Um, again, he appeared in their magazine line, I think in Nightmare Scream. I don't remember which one, but this was his only appearance in comics, I do believe. Again, another probably another public do domain uh, character, Sundance Kid, or historical character. I'm not sure which one. Um, again, there were a lot of westerns. Mostly these were westerns. Uh, these, uh, like, three quarters of these were westerns. But you see, some of the covers are actually pretty good. Um, this is one that I have to upgrade because the pages are actually all loose. These are all square bound, 52 pages for 25 cents. So, again, pretty good deal considering uh, that you got uh, a lot of a lot of comics. Again, only one original story, but certainly. A lot of pretty good comics, uh, you know, if, if you like those uh, old westerns, certainly. Um, this is actually Bravado's number three, which is out of order here. Sorry, Bravado's number one. The Bravado's an interesting little group. They all came together uh, in, in a town that was devastated by uh, some bandidos. And uh, they banded together to get uh, revenge or justice on them. Uh, as you can see, it was a very diverse group, um, African-American, Gideon, a, a American Indian charade who was a mute because his tongue had been cut out, uh, a lady, a uh, hellion, Jefferson Drum was, I believe, a uh, gun for hire, and Reno, kind of an enigmatic figure there. So again, there were some interesting characters here, but um, certainly none that lasted past issue three. Although, again, in Tender Love Stories, those did go uh, four issues. And that was it. They, they just simply could not compete uh, for a newsstand um, space and um, went bye-bye in 1971-72, somewhere in there. Um, and by the way, I, if you notice, uh, I was talking about Israel Waldman. Uh, he had a previous venture uh, in which he used... Um, printing plates uh, he, that he bought off of a printing company to reprint stories from the 40s, 50s, mostly unauthorized. And that's are the Super Comics and the IW Comics. But that, again, that's a video for another day because that's a little interesting 
tidbit in and of itself. The other publisher I'm going to be talking about briefly is Stanley Publications. <clears throat> and again, they're known for their magazines and they're kind of over-the-top horror magazines, ghoul tales, things like that. Um, and again, they didn't last long. Um, the, the Skywalt only lasted like five years, including the magazines. And Stanley, I don't even think that long. But again, during the early 70s. And they did have a, a, a publishing line called Key Publications back in the 50s that had been defunct at that point for 10 years. And so they brought back this, this, these two comics only under Stanley Publication. And that is Battle Heroes 1 and 2. And that is it. These were all reprints. There were no new stories here. I can't tell you much about them. I can't tell you who did the covers or anything. They don't really stand out to me. But again, uh, I think that they tried to see if 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 a uh, a reprint line of their war comics from the 50s would work. And I guess it just didn't, even though you got 68 pages for 25 cents, but all reprints. But again, just not, not a... Um, it just wasn't a venture that could go forward uh, and make money, and I think that that just kind of put the kibosh on it, so they just stuck with their magazines until that went uh, downhill again um, a little later after this. And that's it. Two publishers with very small uh, amount of issues published. Um, Skywald, that again had about, about 20 issues and only two issues for... Stanley Publications Battle Heroes. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this much uh, smaller video. Uh, I plan to do my top five reads coming up and a character study uh, complete. You know, com I show all the covers, uh, appearances, all the, uh, not the cover pairs, all the appearances of certain character. I'll be working on that in the next few weeks. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Everybody be blessed and be back. Bye.